All right, we are back live here at race three of the Sebring race here at Weekly of the GTCC. And I am glad to say I am J.D. Smith. Alongside me is Kane. And Kane, how you feeling for race three, brother? Absolutely red lights. That's right, now green and we are green and we're off to the start. And this is the final race of our uh, three race format here tonight at Sebring. And uh, here we are towards that dangerous turn one. And are we going to see another wreck? Slight Whoa, contact. there it is. He's no, nope. oh, no. Ellis Stevens went through the turn and went straight through the turn and got T-boned. Wow, I knew it. there it went, and uh, hate to see that happening. But uh, oh, anyway, replay here uh, is we get ready to see a replay uh, on the technical side of things. And I'm getting uh, a real bad reverb of my voice. If we could maybe go back to push to talk. Alrighty. And I'm going to do the same. It'll help the broadcast out some. But here's a great re replay of what happened. Unfortunately, Ellis Stevens caught up in that. He was also caught up in that very first uh, accident that you guys saw earlier in the race of race one on the very first turn there. Hate to see him involved again as he had such a great race in uh, the second race of this three race format. This is the GTCC. This is week number two. We, here, we are here at Sebring under the lights for a very special race. It is race number two. And uh, for the rest of the guys that got away cleanly, I'm going to go ahead and do a rundown of the order in just a second. Unlike the very first two races, Kane, these last two, I mean, this last race is 20 laps, unlike the first two that were 15. So this race is a little bit longer. Uh, I will go ahead and do the uh, rundown. As you can see right now, in first place, your current leader, Peter Hebron. It's good to see Peter Hebron up in the lead, as that's a new leader for the first time this season. Uh, right behind Peter is going to be the number 42 car of Jim Egan, who had a great run in the second race. Good to see Jim up there as well. In third place is number 11, Ellis Stevens. Uh, fourth place is Eddie DePaula. Fifth place is Mario Girard. Uh, sixth place is Douglas Beard. Seventh place is Robert Fagg. Eighth place is going to belong to Steve J. Richardson. Sixteen, the number sixteen of C.P. Allen will be in ninth. Tenth place is going to belong to Fabrizio Battistella. Eleventh is going to go to number sixty-six machine of Simon G. Goodwin. While twelfth is going to belong to Christopher Cobb. Lots Kyle of Her Kyle Herring's going to hold down the thirteenth spot, while Jim Pankman is going to hold down the final part of this field in fourteen. And Kane, uh, as we were looking at that accident, man, that turn one has just been a just catastrophic. It's been calamity corner for this track. Yeah, as you can see that shot from pit road, five or six cars there getting some work done on the pits. And it looks like Jimmy, or uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't tell who that was as the camera had flashed away on me, but it looks like we had another car heading down pit road as well. Yeah, I, I seen that as well. Well, this is the third and final race for week number two, so this is the final race, so we got to make it happen here. If you weren't able to grab a win in the first two races, now's your chance, and we're seeing some new names at the top of the field this uh, this third race here, Kane. Yeah, this third race, they reverse grid. I don't know how many. It's usually a surprise on the reverse grid. They reverse the grid there for at least the top ten, and uh, it kind of gives the guys a uh, better chance to get started out front there and miss some of the accidents and stuff and it has proven to be beneficial tonight for a couple of the drivers absolutely as we get a view of peter hebron right here uh in the second place position if the graphic is correct and i it believe is. it is because he does drive the martini machine right there the number 46 uh good look looking car right there and uh good to see peter doing good up here in second uh, looking at some of the back, oh, Ellis Stevens is in uh, 12th place, Douglas Beard in 13th. Uh, I think they got both of them were involved in that accident. Uh, we are on lap 3 of 20, 
And uh, just as uh, they head through the start finish, uh, the start finish line area, going down through turn one again, uh, cars seem to do fine when there's not that traffic. But it's just on that start when you go from a standing start like that. It's all just it takes very narrow car. through there. It's so narrow through there for 14 cars to be trying to go through all there at one time. And on this one, Ellis Stevens on that inside line just couldn't get slowed down enough to make that sharp of the turn and ended up going straight and a couple cars got into him and then the whole field just backed up you know you're absolutely right it only takes one car and it's over i mean you know one car to mistake and in that narrow of a path and, and it's just like bowling pins uh it's just you get caught up in somebody else's mess and unfortunate when that happens but as we're moving along uh, there's a good uh, shot there at christopher cobb and uh, he's showing in the fourth position and uh, if i'm not mistaken in the pepsi max car behind him is that eddie DePaula? and there's jim Pankton in the fifth position right there and uh takes a beautiful turn right there are our overlays correct they are correct Okay, excellent. Just wanted to make sure. Like to double check there. We are under a green flag here at Sebring for the third and final race of the week, as we have 16 laps remaining in this 20 lap uh, event tonight. Uh, uh, through the first two races, we'll go ahead and announce we had our our uh, winner in race number one was C. P. Allen, while the winner of race number two was Robert Fag. And we want to throw a big congratulations to both of those guys. But uh, showing up near the front of the field, it looks like we're going to have a new name in Victory Lane here for the third and final race. There's Eddie Apollo in sixth place position. I knew the Pepsi Max machine belonged to him. Uh, just wanted to make right sure that, that. Absolutely. And uh, that's a cool looking paint scheme. And uh, good to see Eddie back up near the front. He's got a little more work to do from where he wants to be, I'm sure. But. Uh, fighting hard as ever it's going to be really interesting to see some of these drivers that are normally at the front of the field they're in the back cane and they're going to have to fight to get up near the front so i do like the way they reverse the grid it adds a big uh speed to it to see if these guys really can catch up to some of the guys that usually run near the back of the field it looks like cp allen is out of the race on this one. Oh man so he goes from winning to just trouble to trouble unfortunately for cp allen He's seen best of both worlds this weekend. Sebring's got the best of him, and he's got the best hit. So he's Douglas seen both Beard sides has of it. Also exited the race. Too so much damage tough. on that car. So we have two DNFs tonight on our third and final race. That's Douglas Beard once again, and he CP was the Allen leader coming into tonight's races. That's right. Douglas Beard was the uh, points leader, and he had a very rough first race, but he had a great second race, uh, finished second, if I'm correct. And then he turns around and does, has a do not or a DNF in this one. So unfortunate for those guys, but still a great race remaining here with 14 laps in this third and final race. Uh, Simon Goodwin is still holding off Peter Ebron for the lead. Peter Ebron is applying the pressure. Yes, he is, absolutely, and if, here they are heading towards turn one. You see Simon Goodwin with a great entry to turn one, keeps it, uh, keeps the car nice and smooth, and uh, he, he's, not, he's not showing any sign of, uh, of nervousness right now, but uh, with those headlights right in his rear view, uh, it, one mistake is all it could take for that position to fall. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out over the next few laps. Yes, it will. Here, Ebron is having a great race tonight. He's staying right up there, keeping the pressure hard. Simon, Simon Goodwin as well. He's holding off that pressure and maintaining his lead, running good lap times. That's it, and it uh, looks like they're still at less than a second gap from one another. If I can see, you know, if my eyes are not deceiving, and look at the uh, look at this right here as uh, Peter Hebron closes the gap even more as he's just at half of a second gap behind the leader Simon Goodwin and as they head for the start finish line and that's 12 laps now that all remain in the night here at Sebring so if you're going to try to make a move you better start trying now as it starts to wind down already uh, with heat runs tonight 
you got to go. The time is now, and there's no room for, oh, and as you see, Simon Goodwin gets two, uh, two right tires off of into the dirt, and uh, luckily he keeps it from getting too crazy. When you hit the grass at speed cane, you know what can happen, and uh, he's lucky that the car didn't get loose on him. The key is a little keep... bit more forgiving with the front wheel drive, kind of pulls you, keeps pulling you straight a little bit so that you don't get too lost, but still, when you're going that fast, it's real easy to lose it. Absolutely, and that's what I, you know, what I was saying when they're going through the through that, it's just easy to lose it. You're right, the Kia is a lot more forgiving with that front wheel drive, and thankfully so. Um, but as you see, our front two still battling it out very hard, trying to, uh, both of them really, really wanting to win here in week number two. Uh, both of these drivers, Simon G. Goodwin and Peter Hebron, both don't have a win on the season yet. Of course, it is only week two came, but you know these guys would both love to have this victory here tonight. Absolutely, they would. And I tell you what, with them being in the lead for the first time this season, they've got to, the nerves have got to be showing. As you can see, Simon Goodwin going a little wide there, giving Peter Hebron a chance to get, close in a little bit further, maybe even make a move here in the next couple turns. Yes, that could definitely happen, and it looks like it will. If uh, you're, I mean, if Simon G. Goodwin keeps take, I mean, I'm sorry, if our leader keeps taking wide turns like that, uh, he is liable to make a move very soon. Look in for place, as our graphic is show on the 83 car of Fabrizio Adestella, and he is uh, fighting hard now in third place. Let's check in on Fabrizio. Uh, we haven't seen too much of him tonight. I think he might have been caught in some of the bad accidents in the first couple races. And there is the car of Fabrizio. So that is him right here in third place. And, uh, you know, we'd like to see him catch up to this front battle for first and second. That would add a nice, uh, nice be in the mix to see, uh, see him come along. And already the first and second place battle is outstanding came but what would happen if third place car were to get up there in the mix that would make for a really nice race I think Fabrizio's got enough pace that if he kept it on the track he could catch him but that's gonna hurt oh, right there that right there is gonna hurt for Kane and we shouldn't have said anything <laughs> as soon as we did he got a little wide looks like he's okay it just Got a little wide and cost him a little bit of time. You know, it's they so call that the commentator's curse. That is exactly right, and it just is so unfortunate when you fight so hard to gain these times and you start gaining. It a looks little like bit Peter Ebron got around Simon Goodwin. We'll get up here to take a look at that. Oh, and absolutely, as you see the Martini machine get ahead of Simon G. Goodwin for first place. We have a new leader and a first-time leader this season of Simon G. Goodwin. I'm, I'm sorry. Peter Hebron now, first time leader of the season. You're about to see him for the very first time cross the start finish line. And yes, it's an official lead lap for Peter Hebron. And uh, wow, you know that the pressure's cooking on him. He is now in the lead for the first time this season with 10 laps remaining. He's got to be feeling it. You know he wants it. You know Simon wants it right behind him. Love when we see a good battle like this game. Yeah, especially with two guys that's had such a rough first part of the night to have these guys in the lead now battling for first place. It, it's going to be a nice finish to their night. Absolutely. And what both of them don't realize right now is that even a second place, I mean, everybody wants to win, of course. But for these guys and just the positions that they're in, they just a second place position is going to help them so much in the point standings. Um, and even the guys that are in the back of the field that maybe we haven't had a chance to talk about quite as much tonight, just the fact that they show up every week, we really want to thank them for showing up, the participation, because let's say you finish bad in each race each week. Okay, so Sebring wasn't your best race, and but at least if you show up, Kane, you're going to get the participation points, and you're going to be miles ahead of the guys that skipped out one or two weeks on the season. So the advantage is still there. So, you know, even for the guys that had to leave, you know, that, that, you know, unfortunately wrecked their cars bad enough where they had to go, 
you know, at least the participation points are still there. And that's what we want to thank everybody that, that is a part of uh, the GTCC this year. We really want to thank them for being a part of this great league. And we are happy. I'm sure that uh, I speak for you as well, but we are happy to be here and do these broadcasts for these guys. Absolutely. We're having a good time learning how to do this, and I hope we keep getting better and better each week as we have a couple little mistakes here and there, but I think we're getting better each week and trying to make these broadcasts the best we can for these guys because they deserve to have a good broadcast. And I, This race here is kind of... Uh, not the usual for these guys having this these first corner wrecks like this normally these guys race such a good clean race bumper to bumper door to door without touching without having accidents and uh, but, this is kind of uncharacteristic for them tonight but what a tough track and then at the night time like this so i can kind of understand that's right okay i was just fixing to say i think it's the nighttime fact that's got them tonight you know, unfortunately, uh, you can tell when we show you on the onboard cameras, these guys can only see what their headlights allow, except for on that front stretch where the start-finish line is. All other of the 17 turns on Sebring on this 3.7-mile road course is just dark as can be. The only lights that they see is the reflection off the reflectors off the road cones, reflectors on the road, and maybe the motorhome lights in the RV. Yes, that is it, guys. These guys don't get a quite as good as a view as we get it from up here in the broadcast booth. So you really got to hand it to them for, for knowing the track, knowing their breaking points, and then correctively getting on, you know, correctively applying their breaking points right just right to make these hard turns. There's that crucial turn 16 cane that we've seen rough on so many drivers tonight. As you see, uh, our leader take it just perfect as he heads towards the start finish line and as he crosses the start finish line we're gonna have six laps remaining guys and uh, what a great race here tonight for uh, Peter Hebron you gotta just gotta love seeing somebody new get up front and do such a great job I don't want to speak too soon in his favor I don't want to give him the commentator curse but I'm just proud of the way the guys driving tonight him and Simon Goodwin both showing great improvement and uh, just a great race tonight and newcomer Fabrizio, he's doing a great job as well. And here, as we're watching, uh, watching him take these turns, look how great he is! Just the, his smoothness is. There's no irky jerky. He's keeping things nice and smooth. He's got a great pace going. Here he goes down that long back stretch, and here's that uh, crucial 16 coming up. Let's see how good he can take it. Wow, and as you see right there, that is one of the reasons why he is in the lead. And as you look at that lap time down there, uh, just doing a great job. There is now five laps remaining here on the third and final race tonight. Here with five laps remaining, we can go ahead and do one more rundown of the uh, of the field as we got uh, just five laps for these guys to make their final moves for Sebring this week. Here we have in first place for, uh, number 46 of Peter Hebron. In second, we have Fabrizio Battistella, number 77 car of Jim Pankton in third. Simon G. Goodwin has fallen to fourth place. Christopher Cobb is now in uh, fifth place while Eddie DePaul is in the sixth position. Seventh place belongs to Robert Fagg while Jim Egan is holding down eighth. Ninth is Mario Girard while tenth is Kyle Heron. C.P. Allen is uh, scored at 11th while 12th goes to Ellis Stevens. Douglas Beard is out with uh, now 13th and 14th is uh, Steve J. Richardson who is also out. So as we continue with only five laps left, these guys are going to have to battle really hard to uh, gain any ground as there are quite a few gaps in between these cars now, Kane. I wonder what happened to Simon Goodwin. He must have had an off track, must have lost, lost it or something. I wish I could find out what happened to poor Simon. Yeah, it, and I, I hate to see that and because he has such a great run going. I really hate to see Simon fall back like that, but even with him falling back, like, he's got to be proud of himself for where he ran tonight for quite some time. 
Uh, just even though he got the experience of riding up near the front of the field like that for like others, that he can get back there and that he could hold it down. Uh, I'm unfortunate event, I'm sure, place, but at least he knows that he can hold down a position like that and he can get back up there. Maybe that'll help him in the weeks to come as I this see is he made only a pit the second stop week. on lap number 13. Now, I don't know why, if he had some damage he needed to repair or if he didn't put enough fuel in the car or maybe there's a compulsory pit stop that I wasn't aware of, but uh, he has pitted on lap 13. Well, that obviously is going to cause him to fall from second place. Uh, maybe uh, we'll be able to find that out maybe in a post-race uh, <coughs> post, post uh, interview, hopefully, but nothing is guaranteed here. Uh, um, here we have four laps remaining, Kane, and uh, this is it. The time is now, and I just don't know if anybody's going to be able to make up any, any uh, positions with the gaps the way they are unless somebody just makes a crucial mistake. Well, that's easy to do here at Sebring on the night course. It really is. As we look at Eddie DePaula running in the fifth position, he's heading around towards that front straightaway where the start-finish line is located. Um, he's had a good weekend uh, overall. I think he's done pretty well. You know, he had a great run at Interlagos last weekend, and uh, I think this, or excuse me, last week, and I think this week he's uh, done. Not quite as good, maybe, but he's done really good uh, staying as he is new to the league. And uh, I think that he should be okay in the point standings as we'll have a final look later. But uh, I think he should be pretty pleased with the way he's ran in these three races. I think so. He found some trouble in the first couple races and had to try to recover from that. But uh, he kept racing, kept making points. So... He should be okay. I think he was fourth coming in, fourth in points coming into this week's races. We'll find out next week where he, where he washes out. <laughs> I like the way you put that, Kane. Uh, very good, <laughs> very good. Where it but, washes uh, out, I, you know, he's not necessarily a washout, but where the points wash out, rather. And but, uh, I we, put that pretty poorly. <laughs> no, we knew what you meant, bud. Nothing wrong there. Here we are, guys. Three laps left. It is crunch time here in this third and final race. And uh, the time is now. We got some great camera views tonight. Really want to thank Kane for providing us with these awesome overlays and awesome camera views. So a big thanks goes out to him See as Peter we are Everett in the final stages. Lap traffic here. Yes, our leader Peter Hebron is on some lap traffic. Looks like he's going to be able to pass no problem, but as he's up on this crucial corner number 16, he's going to, oh, he just got enough space where he's not going to have to worry about that lap traffic in this turn. And that's what I was just about to say was I was worried that if both of these guys go in this turn together, it could be catastrophic. Um, as we have seen, heavily traffic in some of these dark turns have been just disastrous. Um, with the nighttime, and that's what we're going to blame it on tonight. I really believe that the nighttime had a lot to do with it. As uh, Kane said earlier in the broadcast, these guys just, you don't normally see them get in uh, first lap wrecks like we've seen tonight. So I think the combination of the new track at night, I think that all of that blended together caused those, uh, those first lap wrecks that we've seen in uh, the first race and the third race especially. Yeah, it's really unusual to have four cars out of the race. Very, and uh, you know, the, the guys that, that watch the broadcast every week, that uh, they know that, so it's good to see these guys, and uh, one of the things I love about, about broadcasting the GTCC is every person in this field can drive. Uh, there's not one person in here that doesn't know what they're doing, and all these guys, and they, they drive tight together, and it makes for outstanding races. Really want to throw as the white flag is out really want to congratulate our leader who's holding down that first place position Peter Hebron and also really want to throw out a congratulations to Fabrizio he is uh, looking in the second place and is that Jim Pankton right there behind him and no that is not okay I thought we had a great battle well, I apologize and, I am uh, trying to figure out who that is I thought it might have been Robert Fagg there for a second for a quick second, I got excited. Thought we were going to have a second place battle to the end, but uh, I, as I stand corrected, looks like they're going to end up like Peter Hebron in first, Fabrizio Bastistella in second, 
uh, but I'm going to have to do a final rundown. I'm going to let everybody cross this finish line. Um, but man, if we can see uh, if we can see Peter Hebron win his first race of the season, that's an awesome job by him. Uh, as you see now, the the graphic is showing Fabrizio in third. It is. Um, side Jim by side Payton. battle right here. Yeah, that must have been Jim Pinkman that uh, passed him a few laps ago. Now he's shown in second. I think that is a side by side battle for position. And as they go into the crazy turn number 16, Fabrizio is going to fall behind that car. And he's still shown in second, according to the graphics. So a little confusion on our part. But as they're finishing, here we are, lap 20 of 20 at Sebring. And uh, the biggest surprise of the night is just crazy first lap Rex. But a great job all in all tonight. Uh, of all the drivers and a big congratulations to our third race winner Peter Hebron and he gets his first win of the season Congratulations, big. Peter. That was outstanding. Great. Absolutely job. and a well-deserved win Congratulations Peter, on a great job. That's Peter Hebron with your victory on the final race tonight uh, Gonna go ahead and do a rundown of the final uh, unofficial results here on first place, number 46, Swifter Hebron. Number two is Jim Pankman. A good job by Jim Pankman tonight. Uh, Fabrizio Bastistella in third, while Eddie DePaula finishes in fourth. Christopher Cobb's going to take fifth place, while Robert Fagg's going to end in sixth. Seventh place was number 27 of Mario Gerard, and Jim Egan takes eighth. Ninth place is going to belong to Kyle Heron, while Simon G. Goodwin takes tenth. 11th is going to go to C.P. Allen, Ellis Steven takes 12th, Douglas Beard in 13th, and Steve J. Richardson in 14th. And that's going to do it here as far as the final results go, but what a great weekend we've had and a fun night race here at Sebring Kane. Uh, I don't know, what was your favorite thing of the weekend, man? My favorite thing of the weekend was Peter Ebron taking home the win in the third race of the night. Me too, my friend. I was just going to say it, uh, but I couldn't agree with you more. It's great to see when guys can, can come in here and get their first win of the season like he did, especially on the third and final race. That was the big race. Uh, so really proud of Peter Hebron. Big, big pat on the back from uh, the broadcast boots of you, brother. And I uh, just want to say congratulations to all the guys that ran tonight. We really are glad to have you here. Uh, once again, I'm going to give a shout out to all three of our winners this weekend. Of course, C.P. Allen winning the very first race. Congratulations to C.P. And in our second race, our winner went to Robert Fagg. So a big, big, big thanks to Robert and congratulations for coming and a big congratulations for winning. And third, our first time winner this season in a well-deserved congratulations goes out to Peter Hebron who wins the third and final race. Once again, guys, we want to remind you that we are brought to you by GetDirtyMX.com. We want to thank them for being alongside with us this season. Uh, you need to go to GetDirtyMX.com to get all of your ATV, Supercross, Motocross gear, and uh, all the accessories. Go check them out. They also uh, give out a lot of sponsorships. So if you need a sponsorship or you need some gear, go check out GetDirtyMX.com. We want to thank them once again for being alongside with us. I'd like to mention that uh, if you haven't had enough racing, you can go to the Twitch channel. All the past broadcasts are there. You can watch some. You can watch last week's GTCC race. Also, if you need more racing in your life. You got the V8 series that runs on Monday nights. You sign up for the V8 races. Run with us on the V8 races. We broadcast those every Monday night. So visit graysim.us and sign up for the other leagues as well. That's right, Kane. That is G-R-A-S-I-M dot U-S. Come see us. Uh, they do a great job. There's a really great group of guys that we do this with. Uh, me and Kane are learning how to broadcast, and we're doing it uh, just because we believe that these guys deserve a great broadcast. They're just a great group of guys, and we really like doing 
the broadcast for them. Uh, they're also a great group of drivers. So like Kane just said, uh, come check out the website and uh, also come check out the broadcast and see what these guys are all about. Uh, they're just such a great group of drivers. Um, Kane, I don't, it unfortunately looks like we don't have anybody that's going to stop by for a race interview. I think all of the, uh, excitement of all the, uh, all the first, uh, lap wrecks and everybody to the garage early, but, uh, man, what a great time. I know I've enjoyed myself this weekend here at Sebring International School. How about yourself? Ah, uh, it's been a great time. I, mean, I don't think we'll see too many people, if even unreal, you know, Unreal Racing, you see the NASCAR guys when they get into it and the reporters go up to them afterward. They don't want to talk. They want to, you know, go work on their cars, get their cars back together. Last thing they want to do is be questioned by reporters. We're going to have the same problem here. These guys work hard all week long for their race. And when they have an accident that takes them out of the race, they they feel the same way. They just want to, want to shut their simulators down and go kick their feet up and relax so once again I uh, want to thank everybody once again I also want to thank getdirtymx.com go check them out g-r-a-s-i-m dot u-s that's awesome dot u-s go check us out uh, right there as you can as Kay mentioned earlier also you can now check out our broadcast on, on YouTube uh, uh, if you just look up, uh, like I said, we broadcast the GDCC every Tuesday night. And now we're also broadcasting the GV8 series every Monday night. So two times a week coming to you live. Uh, hope to see you guys soon next weekend. Uh, we, or next week, we look forward to seeing you guys. I'm J.D. Smith. Alongside me is Kane. And uh, anything else you want to send out there, Kane, tonight? Just a big congratulations to the winners tonight. Peter Hebron, great job. Um, Simon Goodwin, great job there for the first half of this race, keeping up there. Not sure what happened, what sent you to the back, but uh, great job keeping up there for the first half of the race. And uh, great job to all the drivers here that, that made it through clean on the, through that first turn debacle. Absolutely, and, and a great job. Congratulations to all of you. And until next time. We look forward to seeing you guys uh, have fun and a great night. And we've enjoyed this night race here at Sebring International Speedway. So until next week, we'll see you later. like to be part of this.